Okay. Hi guys, welcome to the CSM session, the Council of Stellar Management. My name is August Intorsson and I have had the privilege and the honor of being the moderator of the CSM from the beginning. Uh, we had a, a, a brief email exchange before this event between myself and the council members who we will introduce after I give you a short introduction because that's what they wanted me to do, to give a short introduction about the CSM now that we've had three years of it. So I'm going to give you three perspectives, my own personal perspective, and that should be preceded by the fact that I'm not a player. So I am a total outsider. I will also give you the perspective of the CSM, the council itself, and then some thoughts that I've picked up from CCP. And we will end with showing the water turnout in the election that just finished. And now we need the presentation, if possible, on stage. Thank you. So my view of the CSM. We've had now more than 150 hours. That's a full mad month of structured meetings of the council. We've had six meetings with six different compositions of the council over a period of three physical years. So that's a quite some effort that we've put into this. We've had more than 200, and nobody really knows the number, but we have more than 200 issues brought to the council from the most minute cosmetic issues, many having to do with user interfaces, down to even color schemes and whether pink should be available or not. <laughs> to the major issues that interest me as a philosopher by background of how does the law of causation work within the EVE universe. So from the major to the minor, or rather from the minor to the major. I see this as an outsider, as very much an evolving process. The reason why they brought in a moderator at the beginning was that the CCP wasn't quite sure how this would turn out. This was an experiment that nobody had done before, so you couldn't go anywhere for president. So you had to uh, make up your own rules, so to speak. And uh, I don't know how many of you remember the first Council of Stellar Management uh, there were some tensions surrounding both the elections about the people there, so the CCP wasn't quite sure what was going to happen, so they wanted a moderator. And the first encounters were nervous, but they were also flirtatious <laughs> in a, in a, on two or three different levels. <laughs> the, and it, it's not just that the council members are flirting with CCP members, it's also the other way around. Because you see, for individual CCP members, the council uh, can be a way of legitimizing or getting arguments for what the individual CCP member wants. So the flirtation goes both ways. And it has at times also been adversarial. But I think it is, uh, I don't know, it's not to my credit, it's to the credit of the actors that my role as a moderator has become less and less important to the point I don't think that I will be needed at the next meeting. Because I think the relationship is evolving to a more sort of complex but more mature relationship between actors that are interdependent. They're independent, but they're interdependent. Uh, without players, without uh, customers, there's, of course, no CCP. So this goes uh, both ways. So this was a little bit about my perspective. I tried to summarize it in the words power to the player because I find this a very interesting experiment. I think this is a very unique corporate strategy. And I know maybe the players don't often think in those terms, but after all, CCP is a corporation and they have more products than just EVE Online. So they have used a quite unique strategy of communicating with you. And you also see that manifested here during the fan fest, where you will have more than 1,000 people coming together to talk about this game. 
But I also see this has a strong resonance in democratic theory, in democratic evolutionary practices, where the subjects, you guys, get more and more power and are empowered to be on an equal footing with the creator, the company. So I see this as a very, very interesting experiment and I uh, hope that when we finish this uh, session in 45 minutes from now, uh, we will have uh, persuaded you or, or, or convinced you that th this has been a worthwhile exercise. Now let me quickly say a bit about the CSM perspective. I put up a few quotes uh, from them. What they think, I'm not going to read all of them, what they think uh, that the CSM has been doing. It is to provide uh, input, communication, to provide feedback on both uh, what is happening in the game, what has gone wrong in the game, and what is planned for the game. So they're working on all levels, past, present, and future. Uh, they have gained a stakeholder status. Uh, that has annoyed CCP sometimes, at times, but there's a quote there to the CSO, uh, Hilmar Peterson, uh, he can confirm this when he gives his presentation here on Saturday, that CSM has called CCP's bullshit when necessary. <laughs> they have posted on a dev blog few examples, but I mean, there are, like I said, there are more than 200 issues that have been brought up. Some of them have been realized, others not. But a few of them, the learning skill they, they mentioned there. Uh, the big issue last year, as you may remember, was about focusing on improving the game. And one of that was uh, the war on log, which is an ongoing war. I hope they've made some progress since the last uh, CSM meeting. But through the pressure of the CSM, that has been addressed in a, way, a different way than it was before. And uh, there was a special group that was uh, dedicated to fixing potholes that they remember, and uh, other examples that they have cited. I mean, uh, some of you probably followed the, the CSM early last year and the minutes that followed and sort of quite a heated discussion that took place. We had kind of a quite strong head on, not a collision, but a quite a heated discussion between CSM and CCP. And I think that was maybe necessary. It was certainly useful to have it at that time. And what came out of it was a better balanced relationship between the CCP and the CSM. That's why I talk about this evolution of more mature relationship. Now, that if you look at the third perspective, the, the CCP's perspective, uh, they have made a commitment uh, directly in financial resources. They have dedicated personnel uh, that are taking uh, care of this at CCP. They are flying these guys to Iceland two or three times a year. Uh, but perhaps more importantly, it's the indirect internal resources that they put into the development time that they put into addressing the issues identified by the CSM. And they have given the CSM a stakeholder status that was not in the original plan or design. Within CCP, as you may know, there are various stakeholders and their views and interests need to be taken into account when designing the development cycle, etc. So getting that stakeholder status was a very important both step and a recognition, I think, of the process that has been taking place. So from my outside perspective, this uh, commitment of CCP is a continued commitment. They have now committed for a three-year period, and I have no reason to believe otherwise than they are committed to having the council on a continuous basis because I... I think they feel that this is a valuable tool in the whole community creation process that EVE Online is all about. Uh, there are a couple of comments here. 
one from CCP Sulu, how he feels that the CSM has provided an invaluable insight into their process. And another one from, what is it, CCP Ovir, uh, who thinks quite highly of the CSM. So then I wanted to highlight this just to stress that what they are saying, or what I may be saying, is not uh, the only view. The CCP is subscribing to this as well. So, as a maybe a demonstration of this evolutionary process that I was talking about, here you see the election, uh, the voter turnout. It started, well, I mean, you can have different views of whether this was a good thing or, or not a good thing. The first CSM with, what was it, 11%. Uh, participation rate, but then there was kind of an anticlimax. So the winter the water turnout went down, then it went slightly up again, and it went down again. And this, I think, reflects very much the mood around the CSM. But when the rules uh, were changed, you saw more water um, turnout. And as a consequence of events that have taken place within the last year or so, I think we see this water turnout uh, increasing quite significantly. And you re must remember that the player base has increased quite considerably uh, from uh, the first CSM elections. So we're now, on, on one hand, we're talking about uh, uh, 240,000, if I remember correctly, to almost 350,000. So there is, the CSM has m managed to gain a stronger proportion of an ever-growing population, which I think is somewhat a demonstration that they've made a success. And now, uh, to wrap up my brief introduction, uh, I think this is a quote to one of those guys. I'm not quite sure, though. I, uh, is it to you? Yeah, it's no, mine. Okay. Okay. Where they say, serving on the CSM is time-consuming, frustrating, irritating, annoying, often mind-numbing. Uh, and I can verify as an independent outsider that this is how they've sometimes felt. You could quite literally see that on their faces. But they say themselves that this can also be rewarding. So I think it's time for us to turn uh, to the questions to the audience. We have microphones. Uh, somebody is running around with the microphones. I hope I'll be able to see. You just have to give me a, a, a clear sign. But the questions, I think, should focus maybe on two or three areas about uh, if you want to know about how the council functions and if you want to talk about what effect has it had and if this effect has really meant what I was putting up here, does it mean really more power to the players? But before we take questions, I'm sure these are celebrities in game, so maybe you know them all. But I asked now the acting chairman because uh, the, 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 the... Lucy, Lucy Carroll. Carol is not here, the, so the vice chairman is sort of leading the gang today, so if you could please, Valentine. Yeah, um, I'll briefly introduce the six CSM who uh, actually made it to FanFest this year. Uh, we have Corvin, uh, Mesa Anuncio, myself, Deirdre Val, Trevor Dado, I'm not, never sure how to pronounce it. Nobody that. knows how to pronounce it. And then we have Socrates, and at the end of the table we have Maslou. Yu. Um, obviously, also on season five were uh, Minxi, T Days, and Vuklau. Vuklau recently rage quit, as a lot of you may know. Um, and Minxi and T Days couldn't make it due to personal reasons. So there are six of us here. Uh, but during this whole year, there have been nine people, plus a number of alternates who've been working with CCP and uh, try to relay your concerns and to bring ideas to make Eve better. So. Um, I don't know if there's any questions already. I hope so. Otherwise, we'll, we'll look damn foolish. <laughs> okay. Uh, CCP Hammer informs me the mics are here, so those that want to express, ask questions, or make comments, please, co please come up. That why I don't have to. Oh no. That why I don't have to see hands raised. It's a, it's Even in this dark, I can see this looks like a familiar face. Yeah. Hi, I'm Oma Zombie. I used to be on that council <laughs> with Deirdre. <laughs> um, Deirdre, you've been there a while, Maz and yeah, Mesa as well. What 
do you feel the difference is between what was happening before and what's happening now, now that CSN is an actual stakeholder? Can I take that one first? Yeah, sure. Um, one thing that we see is that people within CCP take us a lot more seriously. We're officially a stakeholder now, and that means that people who, pre who previously um, didn't really need to bother with us now have to take us into account. And we, I've had people come up to me and say, like, it's good that you're now a stakeholder because this means now I have to pay attention to what you guys say. It also, it basically gives us a valid position within a company and gives us a little bit more influence. And uh, that, I think, is the single biggest improvement. And we do have CM CSM4, uh, specifically Elven Lord, to, to thank for that. Um, other than that, what we've seen in CSM5 has been a lot more communication from CCP. This was after we complained about the lack of communication, quite vividly. And um, once that communication was set up, and once that got going, it was actually very, very good, and we saw that on a level that I hadn't seen in either CSM1 or CSM3. And uh, that, those, I would say, are the major improvements that are, mark the difference between CSM5 and the previous ones. I don't know if anyone wants to add to this. Well, there's um, an interesting thing is uh, the team that had IDs before, and uh, they have to prioritize the issues among themselves and debate among themselves, the teams uh, at CCP to well, to try to get the resources for their projects. And now that the CCP is official, uh, that the CCM is officially recognized as a stakeholder, they can also point at things that they want and we want to and say, well, here's an extra stakeholder that wants the thing, so maybe the resources should be allocated to the projects. So in a sense, um, in, in, the pa in the first CSMs, uh, Hilma once said, well, this CSM will grow into whatever it is capable of achieving. and. Um, so it's been a gradual process into growing into what it has become now, and it will probably grow again. Um, but each step of the way has been one in which we have gained more influence and more access to resources and information. Um, so, yeah. There's okay, there's already somebody there waiting with the next question or comment, please. Hi, I'm the Slayer uh, with Goonswarm. Uh, I had a question regarding, you were saying that CCP take you more seriously now that you're stakeholders, but when Vaclau quit recently because his little toys got blown up, uh, he on the way out said that the communication between the CSM and CCP was still very poor, and you yourselves released an open letter to CCP because of the fact that you couldn't get any communication from them. Were these isolated incidents, or is the communication not no, quite to a level that you would want it to be? Robert, you can take that? Sure. Um, well, I wouldn't say the communication is poor. I'd, I'd say that it's uneven in that there are some groups of, of developers and, and teams within CCP that um, really engage with the CSM quite a bit, um, and uh, some that do it on um, a more limited basis. And uh, so in the case, for example, of the open letter we released, that was the end product of a long process of, of trying to express concerns um, about uh, particular business decisions that we, we did internally over actually a period of more than a month, um, including a, an earlier version of the letter um, uh, that finally culminated in, and we felt that, um, that we had nothing more that we could do except release that letter publicly. Um, uh, of course, we would have much preferred that we wouldn't have had to do that, that we would have gotten some answers that addressed the concerns that we had. But um, uh, since some of those uh, concerns were not properly addressed in our opinion, we really felt that we needed to let the players be aware of that. Um, that's not something I think any of us took lightly but I think it's one of the roles of the CSM is to um, make, make calls like that if we have to and take responsibility for the, the results, uh, whatever they may be. Call them on their bullshit, like Hilmar said. Yeah. Uh, all I can add is um, uh, what's the difference between this CSM and previous CSMs? Uh, previous CSMs is uh, more like a puzzle pieces production institute where we picked uh, 
just uh, single pieces, single proposals, and stocked it in a pile of uh, backlog. Uh, it was like a black box. No one knows uh, where it is, when you put it on it. And actually, you don't know what's coming out of this box after all. Uh, uh, right now in CSM5, we actually uh, have our hands uh, on a prioritization process somehow. So uh, we can build our own picture of a uh, game we want to see from these pieces. And uh, there was a lot of uh, pieces in that black box uh, by previous, brought by previous CSM. So we just uh, try to arrange a picture uh, of uh, our collective, uh, uh, with our collective uh, efforts, uh, just to build a, a game that makes sense uh, with proposals uh, that uh, don't conflict to each other. And uh, CCP helped us uh, with this process uh, that was never be possible before because of communication issues. So uh, this was the main part of our job of CSM5. There's, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I thought I was ready for the next question, but you can. There's okay. also a significant difference between uh, being taken seriously and being agreed to. Uh, while, the, while CCP does take the CSM seriously, they don't always agree with everything we say or do everything we say. But that doesn't mean necessarily that, well, their decisions are wrong. The, f the fact of the matter is CCP has different objectives than we do have. Uh, while we, the CSM, have to cater mostly to the needs of the existing player base, uh, there is also uh, a need to bring new players, and that is a need that in itself brings back to the community. Um, balancing the, the needs of the one with the need of the other uh, usually takes compromise and, and uh, doesn't mean taking everything we say for granted. And there's also a lot of things we don't have access to. Well, it's getting better now, but uh, uh, all the, how much time will it take to implement this feature that we really want? Uh, if the return uh, based on the cost is not worth it, well, we will get a request denied, uh, but it may be a valid request in itself. And those are the information that we are slowly getting access to, but we didn't initially. So they do take us seriously, but they don't necessarily agree with us all the time. Yeah, and that's a slow process. Are there, are there any more questions, though? We've had two, just two. Come on, guys, don't be shy. OK, yeah, we got somebody here. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Celine. Oh. Hi, I'm Celine. And since uh, no one else is asking questions, I'm going to ask two. Uh, first of all, what do you consider were the high points of CSM5? What do you feel like you accomplished above all? I mean, what made you feel good about it? Second of all, what was the biggest disappointment? What did you feel like you didn't get accomplished? And additionally, what advice would you have for CSM6 going forward based on these questions? Good one. Um, I think collectively we can say that the thing we're most happy about, the high point, is the big um, attitude change within CCP months. that we helped bring around. I'm not gonna stand here and claim that we're the only ones who, who contributed to that, but the CSM was a big factor in that, that, CS, that CCP has started to support their old content more, and you can see this in um, uh, Team Gridlock and Team BFF, the one working continuously on improving the lag and the other now working through a huge list of small items that make life better for all of us. I mean, we can now drop stuff in containers without having to open the container first because it just makes so much fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it is that attitude change that, or that attitude that exists now that didn't exist, say, nine months ago or, or a year ago and I think that change is the thing we're most proud of. Now, for what we're least proud of, I'm gonna let someone else say, so they can look like the fool. <laughs> Somebody want to add? Anyone? No, no add? Really? It's covered by well, NDA, we can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the disappointments we have was, was that when we came at the, at the first meeting of TSM5 was in, in June, and uh, the whole 18 month thing, where we basically got told, well, 
guys, for the next 18 months, the, the, the vast majority of the development resources are going to be allocated to Incarna. Uh, while many of us, while some of us actually looked forward to Incarna, it was not the predominant uh, opinion. And uh, the fact that the majority of the resources was going to be allocated to that left us with really little uh, wiggle room. So we had two teams, I believe, who were not assigned to that, uh, who were available for some of the things we wanted. We had prepared lots of issues to, to the table that we wanted to assign resources to, and we got told, well, there's only two teams for you guys. Uh, in addition to that, one of the teams is going to be assigned to incursions, uh, which is, it's a fine feature in and of itself. It, it, it worked fine, it, it looked great, uh, even at the beginning, but it may not have been what we would have wanted uh, very limited resources that, that were available to be assigned to. So the biggest disappointment in the, in the beginning of the CSM5 was that we looked like, well, we, we were not going to have any say in what was going to happen because there were no resources available, period. Uh, we made the best out of what, is, of what was available, mostly in terms of uh, UI resources, um, UI improvements, uh, and the, s the small fixes that are coming with uh, Team BFF among uh, previous efforts, but those really were the, the major downsides. I would also, from a personal point of view, um, but that's a little bit sun, I am disappointed at CCP in that they pr uh, are insistent on going ahead when, with any sort of microtransactions, which is their business decision, but it's one that I would prefer not to have seen. That said, um, I'm very happy we've seem to have managed to firmly implant the notion that it is completely unacceptable that um, these these uh, items that you would be able to buy with microtransactions would give any sort of benefit in the game. That is completely unacceptable to us, and I think we've delivered that mes message strong and clearly to CCP. So there's the silver lining on that cloud. Um, I th <laughs> That said, I mean, there was a third part to the question, which was any advice you would have to pre uh, to a next CSM, CSM 6. And, well, I don't know. I hope you guys have something in, in intelligent and clever to say about that. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, who wants to be I'll intelligent? Saturday. This is a tall order, right? Don't be put down by the corporate structure. Uh, CCP is a large company, and there are certain processes, certain ways that things are done that you cannot influence and you just have to deal with. And initially, it may come over as very intimidating, like, how are we going to influence this? How are we going to get anything done? But after a while, you meet the right people, you talk to the right people, and eventually, you'll find a way to bring your point across. So don't be put down by the initial imp intimidation. Well, since I'm running for re-election, I hope I'm giving this advice to myself. <laughs> um, but uh, You will know on Saturday. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I would... One thing I would suggest is, is to continue what happened in CSM5, which is uh, moving the discussions to a more uh, higher and higher level. In other words, uh, to use an analogy, um, talk less about dealing with a specific pothole and more about the concept of going out and fixing all the potholes. I think that's something uh, that CSM5 really pushed and, and evolved, and I hope CSM6 does the same. I mean, if I may, I would like to second that very much. I mean, for me as an outsider and a moderator, the difference between the first meeting of the CSM where we had an agenda with almost 50 items, there were almost 50, 20 minute slots on the agenda, and many of them were quite small and, and, and detailed game improvements to the last uh, two CSM meetings where we've had extensive discussions, hour and a half, two hour discussions on few selected substantive things. It's almost it's a totally different kind of conversation. And for me, understanding, with limited understanding of the, the, the game mechanics, participating in the last one, I was very much more involved and understanding what was going on because you were addressing the major design issues and not the particular. So I think this is what I have observed as an outsider. You've moved from petition mode, where you're kind of petitioning the company to change this or that, to being an interlocutor, somebody 
example, the company takes seriously about discussing how they go about doing their business. So I think that's a fundamental change. So I, if, I mean, um, we're soliciting questions and comments, but while we wait for the next one, do you guys think that this change to a one-year term was an improvement or not? It's, it's very good for the continuity because we're able to come here, or we, were, we, we came here in June, and we were able to, you know, we, we, we would talk about things. In some cases, even we would say, okay, uh, or we would make arrangements saying, we'll be back here in December, and then we would like to discuss this and this, or we would like to see this and this. And likewise, when we were here in December, you have the same, more or less the same nine people at the table, and you can say, well, six months ago, we talked about subject A, and you said this and this and this, so what's happened? And Minxi actually in, in uh, j uh, June, or uh, yeah, she made this whole list of action items, things that the CSM would do, things that, C that we needed from CCP, and um, it was basically a checklist, and after, at December we could say, okay, so what's up with this, and what's up with this, and what's up with this? And it allows for a lot more continuity. Downside is, of course, that it's, it wears you down, and you, can, you notice that, at least with some people in the CSM, there is real, uh, I would call, say, CSM fatigue, where after a year, it's, it, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of work, and to keep doing it and keep doing it. I don't know how some of these guys are running for another year. I, I can't do it myself, but uh, it, ultimately, it's good if you have the stamina for it. Stefan, you wanted to um. come in on that? <coughs> Or another point? Well, one of the things uh, that, that was the downside of the uh, previous CSMs, I've been part of uh, the CSM 225, all of them, and uh, I've seen it every time. Uh, when, whenever a new person comes to the CSM, it takes two to three months for them to get up to speed with how things are done and uh, how we process things, uh, what, how we communicate with TCP, what they can do, what they cannot do how they function, who the persons are to talk to, and it takes them two to three months. So by the time they actually become productive, uh, which is three months after they, they enter uh, into the CSM, they only have three months left. And uh, by that time, well, they feel like, well, the CSM is over. I've had one meeting in which I actually didn't understand what was going on because I was intimidated, because I didn't know the people, because I didn't know the things. And, uh, and now it's over, so what have I done? Uh, and the, the extension to, to one year helped uh, bring, well, Trevor here is new, Minxi was new as well. Uh, it helped bring them up to speed fast, well, better, uh, so they were more productive. Well, in, in their cases, they, they, were, they were quite good from the beginning, but uh, we've seen in the past that it wasn't the case all the time. So it's one of the positive aspects of the one year terms. It's actually Thank uh, people start to change during this year, and uh, not only CCP and CSM communications, but CCP themselves and CSM themselves, uh, because of uh, influence to each other. Uh, and uh, one year term is uh, enough uh, to uh, w start working as a team, even if you don't agree with people. Uh, and that's a good help for teamwork, actually for all CSMs. Okay, I, I, I wonder if we will see a continuation of that and if you'll have sort of professional politicians in the future. But we have a, a, a question <laughs> there from the, from the audience. Uh, yeah, my question was kind of following on from the point you were, you were I was just about to do that. Um, my name is Zapatero from Eon Magazine. Um, my question follows on from that. Um, there's, a, there's a certain level of consistency that we have from CSM to CSM now partly because you guys can run for more than two terms and partly because you can uh, run for, uh, serve for a year. Um, do you think there should be more consistency and do you think that would be better served by having some kind of, not formal, but some kind of informal political party system? <laughs> Interesting uh, question. Will we see? Well, maybe that's for the next panel, uh, the, the alliance leaders to answer that. I don't know. There is a continuity. I mean, there is a de facto continuity in that there is uh, an incumbent effect, which, which means that uh, an, a previously elected CSM member has more chance of getting elected than the next one, and there's been no CSM in which the, they were not, there wasn't a member of the, the ones before. Um, that being said, even if that wasn't the case, there's always uh, 
uh, an interim period in which the previous CSM members still uh, are consulted. Yeah, consulted, or they have access to the forums and they have access to the CSM channels uh, where we c they can give their info. Well, they, they, they can give their the information they have to to the new CSM members. Hopefully, well, this this one is the only is the one with the lowest uh, w number of uh, old. CSM members coming to, to running again. There's only two of us uh, running again this time around. And uh, three, sorry. Uh, I, I, dis I dismissed you out of hand, Socrates, because uh, <laughs> you, sorry about that. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, but it's, it's, there is a continuity going on there. It's interesting, the question about political parties in <laughs> EVE. Um, it's been tried before, in all honesty. Uh, yes, exactly, take care. Um, <laughs> but the real, the, that may, or parallels to political parties will only start to emerge when we have probably even double the number of, of votes cast than even this year. Um, when you have, when you require so many votes to get on the CSM that no single power block or best friends forever group could ever do it on their own so that you need to form parties and you need to say, okay, we are the null sec party or whatever, and then sort of encourage anyone who's interested particularly in that area to vote for that. But that's not gonna happen until we see a lot more votes. Um, yeah, it's an interesting question though. Um, couple things. First of all, Stefan, when you, if you're gonna diss another CSM member for running, you're supposed to do it during the voting period, not after. <laughs> um, just a pro tip for next time. Spammer. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and um, the other thing is that, that in terms of the institutional memory of the CSM, um, one thing that uh, I think is very important, and, and actually um, Minxie is working on it right now, is uh, one of the things CSM is, is five is gonna do is provide an extensive transition document for CSM six in terms of the things that we found that worked, that didn't work, stuff like that. Not something that they have to follow, but uh, something that they've, they've got that will kind of hopefully get them up to speed a little bit faster so they can start annoying CCP even earlier than we were able to do it. I, in fact, just before um, I got on the plane to get here, um, she sent me the um, bullet point version of the transition document, just the main line items, and the thing was like two and a half pages long, so it's gonna end up to be a fairly extensive document. With respect to political parties, I'm not so sure that that kind of thing is actually feasible within the structure of the game itself and also within the way um, CSM works because we are more of a consultative and advisory and influence organization as opposed to somebody, we don't have power to tell CCP to do anything. We have influence to try and explain to them why they should do something, uh, why it's in their best interest. And as such, organized political parties above the level of just generalized block voting by you know groups of alliances I don't think is is going to happen anytime soon any other questions no. uh, uh, anybody else that want to comment on that okay there's a new question please Hi, uh, this is Brenton from massively I was gonna say there are two ex CCP employees running in this election <laughs> do you think the CSM is seen as having more of an influence over the game than some actual employees Sorry, can you repeat that? It was a bit louder this time. Okay. Well, he asked if, um, if a CCP, uh, a CSM member has more influence on the development process than uh, a, C a CCP employee. I would actually say that you would have yes. to ask a dev that rather than us, but because they have a better view on that. I, I would actually think it, it's, it's <laughs> actually true. Uh, we'll find out in a few months. Because when you're an employee of a company, especially a large one, well, you, you're given your task, and unless you're a game designer, well, you don't have much influence on the game design itself. You have your task to do, and you, you can talk with people, but you don't, you're not a stakeholder. Ooh. And um, some of, no, joke aside, uh, it, it's, 
it's easier to have some some voice uh, as a CSM member. I think that uh, that then a random dev would do. Now there are devs who have obviously way more voices uh, or influence than we do, but I don't think that's the common thing. Actually, we, we have one advantage. Uh, that uh, CCP stuff doesn't have. We can call bullshit on CCP and we will not be fired for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the pay sucks. <laughs> but, but, but I mean also, it, it has turned out that, that, that CSM can sort of uh, be a transition to become actually a, a CCP staff manager. Whoa. Looking at a couple of them here. We have another question there. Oh, uh, my name is John. My character is Locke Iceland from Test Alliance. I just have a uh, question about voting blocks. You guys mentioned that certain null sex alliance are voting in giant blocks. How do you think that skews, benefits, hurts, or in any way influences the CSM? Uh, I'll take that one for now. Um, I, I don't think it's a real problem because they represent, or they are a large group of people who quite often have a very common common interests in the game and common ideas about how it should evolve. And the fact that they have a powerful voice on the CSM is fairly logical. On top of that, although every CSM has had um, what you could call block vote candidates on it, there's always been a, f uh, a few independent candidates or candidates from smaller uh, groups like Mesa, like Trevor, um, and uh, it's yes, not really uncommonly skewed towards just big groups. There are big groups, uh, big groups represented on the CSM, yes, but they are also heavily influential in the game. So it's actually quite representative, I would say. And not only that, but uh, zero zero players represent a, a sizable share of the community, and uh, there are usually people who are more involved and uh, more dedicated to the game than the high sec, the average high sec player. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them. Dangerous. Yeah, dangerous. I'm sorry about that. But, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, as such, they, they, they do need to have voices. Uh, now, the only question is, uh, CSM members spend the vast majority of their time discussing things that are not their pet peeve. And the, my question is, can the vast majority of the zero, zero power block candidates that we see on, uh, on the election times uh, handle anything but what they are uh, the representatives of. Because that's also an important thing. Can people have to be able to discuss things that are, that are not their favorite things? Uh, a candidate on the CSM will spend time discussing high sec, low sec, zero zero wormholes, industry, and uh, they need to be able to, to, to bring something to the table. While zero zero need to be represented, and that's a fact, uh, the, the persons who need also to be able to be other than um, meet on a chair during things uh, that are not zero zero. That's mm. my one concern with most of the zero zero candidates, not all of them. Anyone else want to weigh on yeah, this? We, we, we need to start preparing for the next session. Is there a last question from the audience? I actually have a few questions for the audience. It's okay, sort well of a bizarro fact. reverse world. Uh, my first question is, could you raise your hand it's not really a question, it's more of a command. Could you raise your hand if you voted in this election? That's very nice. Could you raise your hand if you didn't? Why didn't you? <laughs> no, I would like an answer to this. Is there, is there someone willing to speak up saying, I didn't vote because? Okay, please, please. Uh, Come forward. There's a mic somewhere. Sure, yeah, yeah we got a couple of candidates. Sorry about that. You're a very brave man, sir. <laughs> I salute you. Do if you it's, it's basically simple. We're a small group, so our votes doesn't really add up to uh, what we want as a small group. So. I disagree. No oh, he disagree. says we're a small group. It doesn't really matter. It's not entirely true. Um, false. In CSM 5, T. Amber uh, lost out on being a full member by five votes. Um, it ca he even had six active characters at the time who didn't vote for himself. <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> That was the real joke, but uh, my point is that it, it, it is true. In some cases, every vote does count, and the, um, the votes you cast may be the difference between someone like Maslew getting on the council or her complete opposite, should a person like that exist. 
Uh, I was actually behind Sock by like 12 votes or something like that. It was, it was, it was a very much. small amount. Yeah. Yeah, so if, even if you're a small group, vote. I would say vote because it's never wasted. So anyone else want to yeah, speak yeah. on why? We have somebody else. Sure. Um, the, the main reason I didn't vote is that I don't know any of the candidates. Um, I did have a, a quick browse through, you know, the, what each candidate was standing for, but with it being, um, you know, with it, with it being kind of a virtual election, it kind of took, you know, went to one side while, uh, while we were busy failing at taking Dell. Right. <laughs> no, yeah, it's true. If you don't know, you get a big list of candidates, and you may not know any of them, and there's a lot of text there. If the match. Yeah, well, there is um, there is a website that we've run in the past few uh, past few past few elections called CSM Vote Match, but not everyone may have heard, may have known of uh, of that, which allows you to fill in a number of um, questions, and it'll tell you what candidates most likely match your opinion. However, I fully agree that CCP should do more to make it easier for players to find out what candidates would be good. Uh, choices for them because nobody is going to read 60 websites of 60 candidates to figure out which one is the best choice. So, so we, 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 we take this as a suggestion to CCP for, for before next election they come up there are available software to do this you just answer 15 basic questions. Make it happen and, and, John. And, and you'll come up with your favorite candidate. Please, you. why didn't you vote? I uh, absolutely agreed. Uh, I would recommend uh, having a single blog post with a single link to that exact, exactly what uh, you're it describing. Is a, there, the topic is sticky on the CSM forums, but that's... Uh, and I don't read forums. Yeah. Well, it was on Facebook and Twitter, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not subscribed to those channels. So I, I would say make it, make it a blog post, put it on the news channel, one click, bam, there's everybody. Fair enough. Okay, point taken. Uh, last comment on that. I, I don't have a comment, but I have a question. Um, <laughs> Your main characters in game. How often do you play them, and how how much do you get swamped with people wanting information and coming after you? And how much does it affect your gameplay that you actually will log on and alt just to stay away from it? Because candidates running for CSM now, I think it's pretty intimidating to what you guys face in this game from the community. And I didn't vote because I think an uneducated vote is a useless vote but I still think that what you guys do is fantastic. And I'm really, really busy. That's another reason why, Deidre, you ought to know that. Well, first of all, an uneducated vote is not a wasted vote so long as it's a vote for me, <laughs> or me. Um, but the, my personal experience has been that most of the convos and emails I get uh, are actually during the elections. Um, I don't get too many in-game interruptions. Um, I do get a fair number of emails about things and, and forum posting questions that I have to deal with. Um, but the real fact of the matter is that to do CSM the way I wanted to do it required two to three hours a day, every day. And that basically comes out of your game time. Um, so it really had a significant effect on my game time. Um, in particular, I couldn't do extended things, so I, I wasn't able to do, you know, get into big battles or things like that. Um, I, I tended to have to do a lot of sort of background logistics work for my corporation because that was stuff that I could do when I didn't have, um, you know, things impinging upon me. But yeah, I mean, being on the CSM can kind of kill your game time, um, but that's part of the price you pay. And in fact, you know, in a very real way, um, being on the CSM is just a different in-game profession, and you have to really look at it that way. Uh, unlike, unlike Trevor, I actually, w um, the, the total opposite, I don't really have questions on the forums all that much, but I do get like one hour and, and a half of convos every day, sing every, every time I log in, there's one hour and a half of convo coming up, no matter what, uh, through channels or convos or anything but doesn't disrupt on the game game itself because well, you can just fly and or sit in station and do your industry while you're answering questions. But other than that, there's really, it, it takes a lot of time to answer the, the people concerns, questions, and just look out. The last comment too? Well, um, I actually had, had, had 
two more questions for the audience, which is, um, or comments. If you could, if, if you are um, happy with the uh, performance of the CSM, if, uh, um, could you raise your hand? If you are disappointed in the CSM, can you raise your hand, please? Can you tell me why? Okay. Okay, jump bridges, <laughs> come on. Uh, I'll, I'll just say a word it's about that. It's gonna be a long night. No, seriously, I, I'll, no, no, I'll say a word there about are, that. There are only a handful of hands and the disappointed can, so be, you know, be the, happy with that. The conversation about the jump bridges, what happened is, yeah. okay. there is a certain uh, number of improvement that could happen to zero, zero, and one of which is uh, the ability for smaller alliances to take place in uh, to take hold in zero zero, and also the, f the the facilitation of small gang warfare. Uh, and while I'm not opposed to blobs, I mean the ability to to field 2,000 ships and have a large slugfest is awesome. Really, the systematic aspect of it is really disgusting, uh, and it shouldn't be that way. Now. What happened was we had a, a conversation with some of the game designers about the possible ways we could counteract that um, general tendency for fights to escalate to a point where they become blobs all the time. One of which was the reduction of pro force projection. Uh, one of the ways that we talked about was the limitation uh, with jump bridges, either the nerf or the removal, that's a possibility, or Titan bridges or something like that. Now, obviously, we also said that any such changes, considering the large aspect, the large impact they would have on the zero, zero life, would need to be accompanied by other changes. Now, I understand that it's, a, uh, it's been a really interesting uh, thing on every forum, from EVO to SHC to others, uh, of bashing the current CSM for uh, wanting to ruin the zero zero game. What happened is not that. We have an ongoing conversation where we explore all the possible ways that the situation can be bettered. Now, if people want to make it so that the current CSM wants to ruin your game, well, if you're dumb enough to believe that's all we can do about, we want, we want to do about it, well, that's your loss. Okay, if I can. Uh, this, th this conversation should be finished over a beer uh, afterwards. Our time is up now. If I had a hat, I would take it off for the CSM. These are basically doing an awful lot of volunteer work. And all they get in return is to be grilled by you. So a big hand to them. Thank you.